dear students i am shiva faculty of physics i hope you are doing well in your studies in this bricks in this episode we are going to discuss one important topic for ninth standard students that is cylindrical capacitor so here how can we calculate the capacitance of the cylindrical capacitor in order to calculate the capacitance of the cylindrical capacitor we can follow these steps so what is the steps provide provide the charge with battery this is first step second step calculate calculate e bar with gauss law okay so next calculate v is equal to v plus minus v minus according to the equation line integral i to f e bar dot ds bar last step calculate the value of c with the help of this expression okay now these are the four steps that we can use in order to calculate the capacitance of this cylindrical capacitor what is the first step provide the charge with battery nothing but we can use one battery in order to charge the capacitor and assume after using the battery the cylindrical capacitor is at a steady state second one calculate the electric field between the plates of the cylindrical capacitor with the help of gauss law third one we can calculate the potential difference between the plates otherwise the potential difference of the battery uses there with the help of this expression v is equal to v plus minus v minus is equal to negative line integral of e bar at ds bar later we can calculate the capacitance with the help of this expression c is equal to q by v okay in the next uh, now we can utilize these uh, steps in order to calculate the capacitance of this cylindrical capacitor so here you are seeing two cylindrical shells one is the inner cylinder of radius a another one outer cylinder of radius b now charge these two cylinders that is inner cylinder as well as outer cylinder with the help of the battery now how we can charge it now i am showing here okay so this is the battery this battery having the potential delta v or v positive terminal is attached to the inner cylinder of radius a negative terminal is attached to the outer cylinder of radius b because of this battery the inner cylinder is charged to plus q okay because of this same battery the outer cylinder is charged to minus q nothing but the battery taken the charge so draw this one in a little bit small because of this battery the battery now drawn q amount of charge from this outer cylinder and given the same q amount of charge to this inner cylinder nothing but outer cylinder is what type of charge outer cylinder is negatively charged inner cylinder is positively charged now we can calculate next step what here we can calculate the electric field with the help of gauss law in order to apply the gauss law first of all now here we can assume open gaussian surface okay so this dotted line indicates gaussian surface okay 
So this gas is of this radius now. We are assuming as R. Okay, what is this dark cylinder? This is Gaussian cylinder of radius R. Okay. Now use this Gaussian cylinder for what purpose? In order to calculate the electric field between the plates plus q as well as minus q why is this region electric field is zero so in the outer region also electric field is zero but in this region the electric field not equal to zero so how much amount of electric field that we are seeing between the plates of this capacitor that electric field value we need to calculate with the help of gas law. So how can we calculate the electric field with the help of gas law? So in order to calculate the electric field with the help of gas law, first of all here we are taking one small element. Okay. So for this small element, what is the direction of the electric field? This is the direction of the electric field. As well as what is the direction of the aerial vector? This is the direction of the aerial vector. Now, what is the height of the cylinder? Say, I am taking L is the height of that cylinder, but length of the cylinder, what it will be. Now, we can utilize gas law here. What gas law says for us? Integral E bar dot D A bar is equal to Q enclosed by epsilon. Okay. Now, this one again we can divide into two parts. This integral we are doing for first one, this one for plane, okay, this one for curve. Okay, we can see for plane now. What is the value for this integral for plane? So integral e bar dot d a bar is equal to. So since the direction of the electric field is radially outward, huh? now you can take here also one small element where we can take on this cap. So on this cap, the aerial vector directed vertically up. But electric field vector now we are seeing in radially outward direction. Okay. So E, D, A, between them we have the value 90 degrees. That's why here what we can say? Either through this plane as well as through this plane, there is no flux. Simply to say here what we can write? This is integral E, D, A cos 90. It will become simply equal to 0 by cos 90 that 0. So, about if you are taking this one for curved surface, what is that expression? For curved surface, now we can write it integral e bar dot d a bar is equal to here I am showing one element, na, one element na, for this curved surface. Now, what we can write this element for this curved surface? Surface integral of e d a. Okay. Now, take here e common. What we can write again? E integral dA. Again, E. So, what is the area of this curved surface? This curved cylinder having the radius what? R. Length of this curved cylinder how much now? L. That's why here what we can write? Integral dA is nothing but for us. 2 pi r into l. 2 pi r into l. Nothing but. So finally, here what we can write this result. It is the sum of 0 plus e into 2 pi r. Okay. So 0 plus e into 2 pi r l. So this is the sum of these two. As well as here, Q enclosed. How much amount of charge enclosed by this imaginary cylinder that is Gaussian surface? 
Gaussian surface clearly enclosed the plus Q amount here. That's why here what we can write now is equal to Q by epsilon naught. Okay. Now again we can write here E into 2 by Rn is equal to Q by epsilon naught. Okay. Now in the next step. So what is the value of E here? So E will become E is equal to Q by 2 pi epsilon naught into R into L. Okay, this is the value of E. E is equal to Q by 2 pi epsilon naught into R into L. Now, further we need to calculate potential difference between the plates of capacitor. In order to calculate the potential difference between the plates of capacitor, first of all, choose your path of integration. What is our path of integration now? This is our path of integration. Now, what is this one? This is the path of integration. Path of integration for what? For B. So, what is the formula to calculate that B now here? So, we can write V is equal to V plus Q minus V due to minus Q is equal to minus I to F integral E bar dot ds1. Okay. So, what is E bar dot ds1? So, this is your path of integration, but electric field here directed outward. Na? E bar is opposite to this small displacement over the path of integration ds that's why here what we can write now v is equal to minus integral i to f e ds cos 180 cos 180 how much here minus 1 that's why now we can write here minus of minus plus na? now we can write i to f e ds. Now, we can link this ds with dr. So, from this angle clearly we are saying na, ds direction is inward, but dr direction here outward. That's why what we can write? ds is equal to minus dr. It implies v is equal to okay. So, this ds already is substituting now minus dr. I am taking this minus sign out. Now, from where to where we are going here? We are going from outer cylinder to inner cylinder. That's why here I indicates B, F indicates A. So, I indicates B, F indicates A. What is E here? E indicates Q by 2 pi epsilon naught into R into L. Ds now we can say as dr. Okay. Now what we can write here? V is equal to minus q by 2 pi epsilon naught into L integral V to A dr by R. Okay. Now what is the result here? V again we can write as minus q by 2 pi epsilon naught into L. This result log R natural log R and what remains? B to A. It will become minus q by 2 pi epsilon naught into L. This is log A minus log B. Na? Log A minus log B will become for us log of a by b. Now again with this minus sign I am giving for log according to the log property again this v we can write as q by 2 e pi epsilon naught into l natural logarithm of b by a. Okay. So because of this minus sign we are sending here according to the property of logarithm what we can write now 
log of a by b whole inverse is equal to log b by a. So this is the value for b between the plates of capacitor. Nothing but this is also potential difference provided with the help of battery. Now finally we can calculate c here. C nothing but q by v. Okay. So substitute here the value of v now. Q divided by q by 2 by epsilon naught into L. Natural logarithm of b by l. Okay. Q Q gets cancelled. Right? So what we can write again? 2 by epsilon naught into L. Divided by natural logarithm of b by a. Finally, now what we can get here? C is equal to 2 pi epsilon naught into L divided by logarithm of b by a. Natural logarithm of b by a. <coughs> This is the expression for the capacitance of the cylindrical capacitor when the median between these inner cylindrical plate and outer cylindrical plate is vacuum okay suppose here we can assume this medium now filled with some dielectric okay of uh, constant k so at that time what is the value for c now this value for c we can modify here into it like this c is equal to 2 pi epsilon naught into k into l divided by logarithm of b by a so this is the expression when we can use when the medium between the two plates of the cylindrical capacitor we are seeing as some dielectric instead of air or vacuum at that time we utilize this form Again, with the help of this formula, what is the capacitance per unit length? The capacitance per unit length is equal to 2 pi k epsilon naught divided by logarithm of natural logarithm of b by a. Okay, this is what now capacitance per unit length. Okay, students. In this manner, we can calculate the capacitance of the cylindrical capacitor whenever the gap between the plates of the cylindrical capacitor is not is filled with some material, otherwise is filled with either air or vacuum. So, what we study now, we there are given some rules, use some charge with battery. Calculate electric field. Calculate potential difference. Use this formula. C is equal to Q by V. Later we took some cylindrical capacitor. For the cylindrical capacitor, we provided the charge with the help of battery. After providing the charge with the help of battery, now we assume some Gaussian cylinder. This Gaussian cylinder having the radius R. Again, we calculated the electric field between the Uh, gap between the plates with the help of this gas lamp. With the help of this gas lamp, we calculated this flux per plane surface. Plane surface means these two surfaces. Curved surface means this uh, lateral curved surface of the cylinder. Uh, first one given zero, but for curved surface we got the result e two by r. So in this place, we substituted e to two pi r is equal to q and goes to the q. So finally, after doing these substitutions, we evaluated electric field value. After the after finding out the magnitude of the electric field, we calculated the potential difference between the plates. After the calculation, this potential difference between the plates of capacitor, we calculated with the help of this basic expression. After the calculation of the potential difference between the plates of capacitor, otherwise EMF of the battery, we utilize this formula C is equal to Q by V in order to calculate the capacitance between the plates of capacitor without having any medium. That is the medium there we assume air uh, free space. Later 
we assume the medium now here this medium this gap is filled with some dielectric of constant k at the time we evaluated the capacitance of the cylindrical capacitor with the help of this formula finally here i wrote the expression the capacitance per unit length okay students i hope you understood this session well thank you for watching